open intelligence is what's looking through your eyes. So if you just stop thinking for a moment, recognize that there's an alertness, there's a cognizance, there's the capacity to know that's naturally present. And data is just a term we use to simplify everything. So all experience, all perceptions, it's just all data. It's a stream of data flowing through the openness of perception, the openness of intelligence. And um, I know that when I first came to this training it sounded very much like many other things that I'd come across before, other trainings and other teachings and teachers. Um, but the more I participate in the Balanced View training, the more unique I actually see it is. And it's unique for different reasons. And perhaps the most important one is that in the Balanced View training we get to recognize um, open intelligence as the basis of all experience as all experience. Every single thing that we can think, feel or sense, all data, is nothing other than the bright shine of open intelligence. It's the dynamic energy of this open intelligence. And this is why um, there may be other teachings that sound similar, but sometimes can be saying things that sound very pleasant or sound very nice, um, pleasant to hear, but actually we don't get to see for ourselves the power and potency in things like anger, irritation, depression, sadness, loneliness. Where we really get to um, experience the potency, the beneficial potency within all data streams. And so to be in a training where everything is allowed to come up, we particularly ask for the temperature to be turned up today just so you can really feel the stew of data. <laughs> to have the opportunity to allow even the most afflictive or challenging data streams to also be as they are. So this is the key instruction that for short moments repeated many times we relax and allow everything to be as it is so that's relaxing the need to continue to describe everything that's going on for you. So you can just, just do that for a short moment and allow yourself again to recognize this basic state, this intelligence that's looking through your eyes. We've been trained to focus in on the descriptions, on our descriptions about the descriptions, on our opinions of the descriptions. Here what we're given is this really simple and powerful and direct instruction just to pause that for an instant, return to the instinctive recognition of the inseparability of whatever we're thinking, feeling or sensing, the current moment perception, whatever that is for you, as inseparable from the open intelligence within which and as which it's appearing. And that is such a potent instruction because we can apply it to all circumstances, to all data streams without exception. So in this training we're not trying to soothe data. We're not trying to make everything look all fluffy and pleasant because sometimes it looks fluffy and pleasant, life, and sometimes it really doesn't. And if we're spending our time and our energy trying to make it look nice and pleasant and trying to avoid the things that don't fit into that idea of what it should look like, then it's a constant struggle. And more than being a constant struggle, we are missing the point and we're missing the power that can be extracted from the things we've labelled as negative or afflictive. So for example, the switch is one from victimhood. So for example, if I have thoughts about loneliness, um, with your question, it's a perfect example to really see the difference and the two ways that we can use our intelligence or our mind. When I used to have thoughts of loneliness, then I immediately begin to think about those thoughts. You know, I'd wake up in the morning, oh, I'm so lonely. And then the game begins. What do I do about my loneliness? And then what am I going to do about my loneliness? Oh, I know, I need, to, um, I need to find some new friends, or I need to go to a different place where there's people that I think I'll like, or, oh, God, maybe I'll just smoke a joint and then I won't feel lonely, I won't care about feeling lonely, or maybe I'll... Um, I know, I need a girlfriend and then we can be lonely together or 
whatever, whatever that solution is. But how about, just for a short moment, you cut the descriptions about loneliness and you allow yourself just to be lonely. Like, wow, that's a strange idea. And um, it was so strange for me, that suggestion, um, but I was open and willing to just test it out for a short moment. I didn't want to feel lonely all the time, who does? But just for a short moment, I could test out what happens when I stop all of the descriptions that just spiral off endlessly. Oh, God, I'm so lonely again, and you know, everybody else seems really happy, and wherever I go, I feel lonely, and even when I'm with lots of people, I feel lonely, and it can just go on and on and on. What happens if I just cut that at the root and I recognize that the basis of that thought or that feeling of loneliness is the same open intelligence that you identified when you stopped thinking? And you recognize that instinctively for yourself. And you see that the loneliness is also obviously just this dynamic energy of open intelligence. And you relax and you allow it to be as it is for a short moment. For me it was like... Um, it's like popping a balloon. It was like the whole need to go into this endless world of descriptions around one thought or one sensation was just emptied of all its, its interest. And actually, I could feel completely comfortable, relaxed and at ease whilst there were thoughts of loneliness there. It was only the thought that I had to do something about it, the learned habit the victimization, the self-victimization of believing that something like loneliness had an independent nature and I needed to do something about it. So that's a story I've been telling myself for so long that it was only through these short moments that I was able to cut that story at its root and return to the basic openness that was the basis of all of those thoughts and emotions. And every time I did that there was a sense of relief, there was a sense of openness, there was a sense of clarity I found that I could then make much clearer decisions about, well, if I am lonely, what am I going to do about it? You know, from a really clear place, do I need to do anything about it? Again and again, returning to the brilliance of intelligence that is always on. But it's not just bright and clear, it's also extremely loving and compassionate. And um, the love and compassion I first of all had to show to myself and again I discovered that in the short moments of allowing myself to be as I am, however that is, particularly with the negative ones. We don't always speak about them but they are so potent because these are the things we believe are signs that there's something wrong with us. When I wake up lonely or I'm angry or I'm irritated or um, I feel like everything's too much and I can't cope and all of the stories around that. I had to show the lovingness and the kindness and the gentleness and understanding of allowing myself to be as I am, just for a short moment there. And in that I saw this mechanism. Either I collapse into the stories or I relax and rest naturally as open intelligence. A really simple choice in each moment. Just a moment to moment decision about how I'm going to use my intelligence, my time, my energy. And so, for example, seeing really clearly that your actions and your behaviour do have implications. And you can see exactly how things will play out from this clear vantage. But not just seeing how things can play out from a state of um, passive victimhood, but seeing that clearly and saying, OK, well, what am I going to do about that? If I have this situation and I can see it's going to potentially cause harm and upset to somebody close to me, but I'm really clear that that's what I want to do, then how can I demonstrate to them so clearly that it's undeniable my love and care for them and still do the thing that I'm really clear that I want to do? So we have this capacity to encompass it all within our intelligence. We don't have to become martyrs. We can be really clear and powerful and loving and supportive to the people in our lives. That's the kind of intelligence that we actually all have access to. I, I really loved your example about losing your, your bag or your wallet with all of your, I don't know how many credit cards you've got, if you're lucky to have more than one. Or, but when, you, know, you lose your wallet or your, your handbag or whatever you keep all of your valuables in. And this is just a perfect example. You, know, you, you lose it... Um, Actually, I 
maybe I haven't got time for the story, but I went for a, a swim on a beach once and um, there wasn't many people around and I had my bag with all of my valuables with me and I put my towel on the beach and I thought, well, I want to go for a swim, but what am I going to do with all of this stuff? So what I did is I, I very carefully, I buried it in the sand like, and put my towel over it and it had everything in it, like all of my money, all of my cards. And I went for a beautiful long swim. It was just fantastic, great swim. I was out and swimming for about half an hour. And I came back and came out the sea and dried myself off and wandered off down the beach. <laughs> And I got to the end of quite a long beach and suddenly it hit me and it was this rush of adrenaline I don't think I've ever known. And I ran back along this beach and um, much to my horror the tide was coming in. I could see the sea coming in and I knew, I found the kind of rough area where I'd buried all of my valuables and I began digging. Like, Digging, 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 dig, like just, you know, and this is just a perfect example of what we do when we lose our wallet. Just, oh, everything was going on. There was, there was fear, there was anxiety, there was concern, there was thoughts about what am I going to do? I've lost all my money, I've lost everything. And, um, and sometimes when that happens, there might also be a sense of relief mixed in there. Hooray, I've thrown it all away, all of my responsibilities. Maybe this is where I find freedom. And I was digging, digging away and the tide was coming in and um, it was so sweet because people that passed on the beach all asked me what I was doing. And in the end, there was five or six of us all digging away on the beach. And I found, my, I found it in the end and it was just an amazing sense of relief. But the demonstration is here is that Regardless of what I was thinking, feeling or sensing, I was not a victim to that situation. I was determined to do what needed to be done to find my wallet, to find my money, my cards. I was not going to sit on the side of the beach, sitting there with my head in my hands, this is a disaster, it's there somewhere, you know, I've lost everything, maybe there's some freedom in there as well, I don't know, but you know, that wasn't my reaction. I was digging, digging, digging until I found it. And so this exact giving up of the right to be a victim is that what we find in relying on open intelligence in all situations. So for example, if I am not with my family and I want to be with family, then there can be so many thoughts around that. I can't be with them because of this or that's difficult or maybe this is a consideration and, it, and there's so much to think about. But when I'm focused in on those thoughts, all I see is those thoughts. When I relax as open intelligence and I recognize those thoughts as this same dynamic energy, then immediately I give up the right to be a victim to any of them. And like with the capacity to put all of my time and energy into finding my wallet, I can see clearly that actually if this is something I really want to do, then there is nothing that can stop me. It's only the disempowering habit of focusing in on the data that means I feel like a victim. And as I train up open intelligence, that sense of victimhood in life, um, or in particular or specific relationships, it just opens up and opens up and opens up. And I see that actually I never have to behave as if I'm a victim anymore. The same with strengths or talents that you have that you want to express. And that's one of the things that I've seen in this training for myself and so many other people is that as I train up in open intelligence, the thoughts and the ideas around why I can't express my talents in the way that I want to are also outshone within this bright, shining open intelligence. They do not have the power that I thought they had because they cannot be found to have an independent nature. None of them. All of the stories about limitation and disempowerment and why I can't do this and why I can't do that, they're just stories. They're just ideas. And as I incorporate them within open intelligence, by allowing them to be as they are, they're already incorporated. I just need to relax and recognize that instinctively. Then, like this balloon that's popped, they lose their power. All there is is this vast openness. And from there, I see how to proceed. So it's so, so simple, this practice and approach. 
and it's something that you can train up. You can increase your capacity to recognize open intelligence. It's already present, no one can give it to you, no one can take it away, but you can increase your capacity to recognize it. And that is what the Balanced View Training offers. It's not just a theory or an idea, it is allowing you to live as open intelligence in all aspects of life, including the things about yourself you don't like, the thoughts and emotions you don't want, extracting the power from within those two. And the support system here, my, in my experience, is completely unique. Totally unique. There are texts that are open intelligence speaking to open intelligence. They instinctively, you will instinctively recognize what is most fundamental about you through reading these texts. It's just the way they work. You can participate in a one-day training today and really dive in and find out more. Really get to know yourself as you actually are. Um, we have free media on the media table or from the website. You download as much as you want and listen. Every time you listen and every short moment you take, it reinforces your capacity to recognize open intelligence. So it's so simple, but it pervades all of life.